Uh, right, this weekend, TalkSport brings you coverage of two live boxing events on Saturday. Head over to TalkSport. The Boxing YouTube channel at 5pm to watch GBM's Coming of Age card, which features heavyweight Huey Fury's comeback. Then the big one on Sunday morning from 4am. Set your alarms. Adam Smith and Spencer Oliver bring you live commentary of Devin Haney against Ryan Garcia for the WBC. Well, it was the WBC World Super Lightweight Crown. Stay across all the action this weekend on the TalkSport Boxing Network and the TalkSport Boxing YouTube channel. For more on this and that breaking news as to why it's no longer for the super lightweight crown, let's speak to TalkSport's brilliant commentator, the voice of British boxing, Adam Smith, joins us. Smudger, good evening to you. Good evening, gentlemen. How are we? We are good. Yeah, we're very well. Thank you. Look how posh you are, even just to come on YouTube. You look fantastic. <laughs> I um, listen. I've got a. I've got a big night, a big day tomorrow. So. Uh, I've got to wear something smart. We've got a fantastic show here in Sheffield with uh, GBM, uh, Magic Night, the coming of age, Shaquille Thompson headlining a, a fantastic card. Um, it's crammed full of, of young prospects and a terrific women's title fight on as well. Huey Fury making his comeback. A couple of Irish gems uh, in Tien and Bradley and Kieran Malloy. It's a, it's a fantastic British fight card. And then, of course, we've got the, uh, the huge night in... New York with uh, Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia and everything that's going on over there at the moment, which is, uh, well, boxing's crazy. It just gets crazier, doesn't it? Well, let me let me stay with that for a moment because that's a bit of breaking news. I don't know if you're aware of it, but Dan Raphael has recently come out and said he believes the fight should be called off now, especially that Garcia has come in overweight. What are your views on that? It's a really strange one, um, guys, to be honest, because uh, it's a fantastic fight, right, on paper. It's one of the great fights of 2024. These two, Devon Haney and Ryan Garcia, met six times in the amateurs. They've both been boxing since the age of seven. They're absolute superstars. Ryan Garcia uh, on Instagram, on TikTok, he's absolutely huge. Devon Haney in my opinion, one of the great pound-for-pound -pound fighters today. And they meet for the seventh time in their lives in New York on Saturday. However, the build-up has all been about Ryan Garcia and his erratic behaviour, his, uh, his, his social media tweets and the press conference, and now the weigh-in coming over three pounds, just over three pounds over. And, and he made a, made a bet with with Devin Haney to say that he'd pay half a, half a million for each pound he was over because Devin Haney's dad said he definitely was overweight. He comes in, he's apparently agreed to pay that hundred and, uh, that 1.5 million, sorry, the, the three five hundreds for the three pounds wow. overweight he's come. He can't win the world title now, Devin Haney's property. Um, you know, everybody wants to see the fight on paper between two great fighters, two great boxers, but you have to have concerns over what's going on with Ryan Garcia. And, you know, the mental and physical well-being of fighters is the most important aspect in what is a very dangerous sport. So I haven't been around Ryan uh, for this fight. I've been in, in Britain, so I don't know. I haven't seen him or his team, those nearest to him have to have to make these calls and and whether it's you know a big ruse and a big sort of push on trying to sell the fight and but it, it's been extraordinary really his behavior and and he, he, i just don't know i haven't been close enough apparently he's passed a new york athletic psychiatric test as well as obviously all the the usual tests they have uh, in the in the build up to a fight so those over there the, the the athletic commission and everybody involved in the fight have to have to make the call. That's not something for for us to do over here. We're we're just ready to call the fight uh, as and when it happens, and we can't wait for it as a fight. But of course, there's been a lot of uh, difficult issues going into it. Adam, when you, you spoke about it there about Ryan Garcia's behaviour and on on face value, now you look at the outbursts on social media, him coming into this fight overweight. Um, does that suggest you a man that's taking this fight seriously and genuinely believes he can win? Because I know training camps are hard, but the fact that he's come over so heavy and the way he's behaving, does that suggest to you that he's, he desperately wants this fight? And also now the world title's off the line. So what does that suggest to you? Again, it's a really strange one. It just continues the erratic behaviour because there's times where you think Ryan Garcia wants wants this this win so desperately, you know, over his bitter rival from the from the amateurs. And and I don't know if you saw the shots at the Empire State Building as well yeah. when they were pushing and shoving and, and they were meant to go into the baseball game as well that night, but it didn't happen. You know, the whole promotion has been very difficult, but there's a lot of eyeballs on it. 
Okay, so the cynical side says, right, you know, everybody's watching. And Ryan Garcia has always been not only just a fighter, but also very aware of his social status and what he can bring to the, you know, the, the, the bigger picture of, of boxing, the grand scale of entertainment. So it's a difficult one because it's the entertainment and everybody's watching, but it's almost like car crash telly, isn't it? You're mm -hmm. putting your, your fingers sort of over your eyes and not really watching. What we want is a great fight between two great champions which is what these two are they're fantastic fighters in that athletic prime they're 25 years old they're just weeks apart they've known each other all the way through it's a fantastic rivalry which in many ways has been tarnished by what's happened so it's almost like we don't know until that first bell goes what is going to happen but I think Ryan Garcia wants this desperately badly but what sort of condition is he in mentally? Mm. I've not been around him, so I can't judge, but what I'm seeing is worrying. Um, Adam, listen, let's just go back to, um, it's a busy weekend of boxing. Uh, let's go back to, I think it all begins at 5 p.m. tomorrow on the TalkSport Boxing YouTube channel. That's GBM's coming of age card. It features uh, Huey Fury's comeback fight. But you also mentioned Shaquille Thompson. Do you think he's boxing's best kept secret at the moment? I think Shaquille Thompson's a fantastic fighter. And yes, I think that that best kept secret tag has been around Shaq for a while now. But I think that secret's well and truly out. He's headlining. Uh, he's joined GBM Sports, which is, is fantastic. He's got a, a stage now. Uh, it's his birthday today. He just turned 27. He was uh, around his uh, his young daughter at the at the way, and he's a, he's a family man. He works very hard, nine to five job as well as boxing. Uh, he's a great guy, but he's a really really talented fighter. He's huge for a middleweight. He's six foot three. He's a southpaw. He can fight at range. He can fight on the inside, and he can punch to seven knockouts already in his eleven wins. He's undefeated. He goes for a couple of titles tomorrow night. And, um, you know, if he comes through that and looks impressive, then he's a danger to any middleweight domestically and maybe even beyond as well. You know, Shaq wants to be a world champion. He wants to follow in the footsteps of his uh, hero, Kel Brook, who he looks up to. And uh, he's got the attitude. He's got the, the, uh, the drive, the ambition, the dedication. And I think he's got the talent too. So really looking forward to seeing whether he can shine uh, against a difficult opponent, a tough guy, uh, in Vladimir Georgiev, he's he's desperate for the win as well. But I think it's about levels, and I think I think Shaquille will look very good tomorrow night. And last one for me, Samaj. How how excited are you to see Huey Fury back? I mean, he's not fought since twenty twenty one. Ring rust as well. That might play its part. But are you excited to see him back? Really excited. It's it's a magic heavyweight division at the moment. What Turkey and Dr. Rakan are doing out in Saudi, it's like a big pot, isn't it, where all the heavyweights can be can be drawn out. And you want to be part of that mix. Joseph Parker is a, a brilliant example of somebody who he got stopped by Joe Joyce and he gets some momentum and bang, he's back out and he's, he's making a lot of money in some huge, huge heavyweight fights. Huey Fury wants to be part of that. He had his world title opportunity too early in his career. He was a baby. He wasn't ready for it. He's had real difficulties outside of the ring, lots of injury and issues. And three years out is a long, long time. But Peter, his dad, has made sure, you know, he's, he's as right as he can be. He's physically good. He's only 29 still. So I'm really pleased to see him back. I think he needs to get some, some rounds, as you said, Darren. I think that the ring rust needs to be shedded pretty quick. He's out on the GBM show tomorrow night. He's out again uh, on Lauren Price's show in Cardiff, then hopefully we'll get him out again in July. That's the idea with Huey. Three or four, four or five fights maybe uh, for the rest of the year. And then let's see where he is. He'll be up there with the, the Wardies and Clarks. And then maybe mm. he'll get into that magic Saudi mix. So yeah, really looking forward to seeing Huey Fury back. And obviously the young talent that are, are scattered everywhere on this, this wonderful night in Sheffield. Yeah. It's going to be a fantastic atmosphere. And it's going to be a great night of boxing. It, it should be indeed. Listen, thank you for coming on. That wasn't Ryan Garcia's people phoning you earlier, was it? <laughs> no, it's actually uh, it's Al Siesta, who I work with at GBM. It's his phone going off. It's constant. I mean, to be around Al, the phones are going off all the time. He's uh, probably the busiest man in yeah, boxing. I, I and, bet he uh, does yeah, that. He does that himself from another line just to sound busy. I, don't, I, don't, I don't, actually don't think it is. Everybody, <laughs> phone, everybody phones down. I'm in the office. I'm in the engine room of GBM Sports at the moment. So well, we're just getting the final preparations ready for tomorrow. Listen, we're big fans of yours. We're so delighted you're back on boxing and even more delighted it's with us here at Talk Sports. So have a great couple of days. Set your alarm early for Sunday morning. Promise That promises to be an absolute humdinger of a fight. Um, keep up the great work. We'll speak to you in a bit. Cheers, Marge.
Thanks very much. Cheers, guys. Talk Sport Drive. Super opinionated sporting debate. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.